a default is uh, one way to look at it is it's a set of assumptions that underlie decision making that tend not to be on the table when you're having a conversation about what to do so the word sort of says it all if you set a default you then tend to take it out of the conversation but we know and we've heard from the speakers already that there are trade-offs between the long term and the short term and we know from experience that long-term investors even though in theory they understand mm. there'll be some short-term losses they tend to want to have their cake and eat it and they tend then to respond quite negatively when there are short-term losses With regard to, to value at risk, um, so I, I was at JP Morgan when uh, that um, sort of tool was, was originally developed and then you know popularized. Um, and it, it, it was developed essentially um, to, um, uh, to meet a, a very um, simple objective originally um, was to uh, provide Dennis Weatherstone, who was the uh, CEO at the time, uh, with a daily snapshot of what the risk of the trading book actually was. Um, and, and his question was very easy. He once asked a bunch of people um, at a meeting, you know, how much can we lose in this portfolio over the next 24 hours? With respect to, to the GIP standards is, what we hope is we've captured the minimum set of information that will also stimulate then the additional discussion that is necessary. The, the, the investor knows what they're looking for or thinks they knows what they're looking for. And, and given this base set of information, which hopefully uh, is a foundation that they can then be built upon, um, they can have a two-way conversation with the, with the product manager about whether it can deliver what the investor is hoping it can do. So we've got this foundation level. What we want to get away from is the whole discussion being around the quality of the data. The risk managers are going to focus largely on making sure that the portfolio managers are not departing for the man from the mandate. In a situation where the mandate includes a requirement to focus on a long-term horizon, there's going to be a need to develop uh, metrics, basically, you know, to try and indicate whether the portfolio manager is doing their job. Uh, and FRMs are well positioned to do that. We require monthly returns to be used as the basis for all of the information that is being generated. Now, are we going to require um, a whole different set of returns for the comparable risk measures that we're asking for. And again, we only are looking for a volatility, the annualized three-year standard deviation as the standard required risk measure for sharp information ratio, tracking error, maximum drawdown, whatever. Um, that would be presented as additional information and disclosed how it is done. Mm -hmm. So the only one we mm -hmm. are actually putting constraint around is that three-year annualized standard deviation that use monthly return. I absolutely agree that you, if you use quarterly, if you use annual for the same time period, but a different frequency, you will end up with different numbers, which is why we mm -hmm. said it must be monthly. You had to pick something. Annual's not gonna work. Quarterly 12, not gonna work if you're gonna hope to get a measure in there for three years. So this is how it ends up being a sort of pragmatic approach. The thing that really struck me about the last 15 minutes or so of conversation is how much discretion is in the hands of the manager in stimulating discussion, in communicating. We heard repeatedly, this is a minimum set of information to stimulate discussion. So I guess I'm leaving or, or coming to a concern about how 
able those people are to stimulate discussion about this particular default issue, how much that is on their radar, how able they are to communicate these um, trade-offs between the short term and the long term and how we are educating them to have these conversations. The FRM certifies that uh, somebody kind of understands the broad range of risks and risk management tools. But in order to do what Jacques does, you know, you've got to have a lot of experience as well. So I would say the FRM is the first step down the road to being able to organize the conversation, the big conversation I was just talking about. We need to fundamentally um, spend time with our clients asking the higher end questions of, of what is your investment objective? Uh, because you can really only you know, estimate risk. One, you know, the risk is the probability of not achieving your objective. Let's get clarity about what the objective actually is.